Great, let me just get this in before we go on to part two, right? A lot of work's gone into this, a lot of research and that. So if anybody from Matchroom, Border Control, Crusher Ben, whatever you want to call yourself, Connor Cheetah Ben, you want to take me on the court of law or cause me problems behind the scenes, get in touch, porkycorner at mail.com. Or if any of you got gonads like me, you're welcome to come on this channel. All right. We're not going to get that from you, are we? Cheats. Backhanded lot. That's what you are, man. Back you should be embarrassed. 20,000 people messed about. You don't care. You don't care. All right, mate. Welcome to part two, Julian. Uh, I don't know what to say, really. Do you, do you know them things you wanted to ask me, that uh, text thing? Some yeah, stuff. I think one of the questions I've been asked is about the um, is about the, the drug or the medication, uh, clomiphene. People are asking me, and so I've had to do a bit of research, and I'm sure you've been asked the same question as well. If it's a female fertility drug, why would a male athlete potentially take this and what kind of impact could it have on his performance? So I think Terry explained this really well, but some people will take it in isolation because it's effectively gives, in men, it's not for men, but in men, um, I think it's about altering with the receptors to the brain. It, you know, you, your body, your brain tells your body how much testosterone it needs. Yeah. And some, some drugs act as um, the turn the receptors off in your brain so your body continues to create testosterone. And obviously, if you've got massive amounts of testosterone, um, the, the, you know, the strength would be, you know, four or five times that of, of other men. I mean, it's increased testosterone, increased strength. If you look at, you know, certain animals, for example, and, you know, gorillas and that, the testosterone is through the roof. Yeah, they're huge animals, but... What you've just said there is bang on, because uh, Mickey Theo, you were telling me when he started with roids and that, we're doing 200 kilo bench presses like it were a feather. Like it were nothing. Like it were a feather. To grab a human being, two, one on your each hand and just throw you across gym, you'd be flying in air. You've seen what Hulk Hogan used to do to people. He would juice that in his mind. Seen well, that's what happens is yeah. you, you're 52, I'm 51. When you get older, you, your testosterone levels drop. Oh, but when you the drop, mate, everything, some areas of performance suffer, all right? Well, you mean you were, <laughs> pop, you were like me, pole bolting out of bed when you were 18, you get to like 42 and you're like... <laughs> yeah, ju ju just a bit, mate. Although, yeah, I'm, uh, hopefully I'll still do all right, mate. <laughs> but... Your testosterone. Problem, maybe he's got a problem at 26. Maybe he can't, you know. He's a young man, mate. He's a young man. His testosterone will be through the roof. So okay. when you increase your levels of testosterone, it, it effectively gives you just additional strength, additional energy, additional stamina, all these kind of things. So taking in isolation, testosterone through the roof. Now, one of the secondary uses and um, Gabriel Montoya covered this and Terry covered this, was Terry did it in more of a technical sort of chemical breakdown, but effectively can be taken as part of a, a cocktail. Yeah. yeah, it can literally be just taken as part of a, a wider He's cocktail. He's well up on all that, Terry, you know. He's well sharp about all this. He's sharp on all that because, you know, he, he, he knows people who probably took stuff and they've told him. Yeah. He knows sprinters, weightlifters, bodybuilders, and like he's proper analyzers stuff, you know, like that. He's a bit of an anorak for it. And, and I've been listening to Terry and I've been listening to people. For, I mean, I knew a little bit about PEDS, but Rico's quite up on it as well. Rico's quite. And this is the thing because everybody's saying, what could it do? So, one, it can increase testosterone levels high, very high, hundreds and hundreds of percent increases. Two, it can be used as part of a cocktail. But three, and this is what Johnny Nelson said today, and several other people are saying it can be used as a masking agent. Translation, it can be used to hide the effect of other That's drugs in the system. Now, I haven't said any of those three things in relation to Connor Ben. I'm just talking about the drug and what the impact that drug has. Now, for uh, Callie Sowland to turn around and say this drug is not a performing enhancing drug, perhaps he should go away, educate himself, Speak to Gabriel Montoya, speak to Terry, Chapin Dharma, speak to people who actually know what they're talking about, and he might have a completely different opinion. 
it's either a naive opinion, his head's buried in the sand, or he doesn't care about his boxer. Or he's been caught lying, he doesn't know what to do. A bit like Tyson Fury with seven million to charity kind of thing. He nipped it in mud straight away once it got out of hand. Then it, nah, he's going to have to do the same thing because when you put yourself out there, as I know, because people, well, people have a go at me, they just make stuff up, don't they? But Conor Ben's been busted, hasn't he? Yeah, 100%. And again, another question, like you, we've answered the question, we've been getting all these questions all day. It's really important to just keep repeating the same message because Eddie does that, by the way. So if I repeat myself, Eddie repeats himself to get that so that message lands. Yeah. Fans need to ask, ask for the beast. So we're not where is it? Let's see some proof that you've asked for it. Do you remember the lies that this spun for nearly four years that Dylan White were taking legal action against WBC? Yep. Let me tell you something about Dylan White, right? Dylan White's never so much as sent a letter by a lawyer to WBC, mate. Barry Hearn don't sue people. They don't. They look at it as a waste. The businessmen, their accountants, it can go either way in a court of law. Barry Hearn, a bit like Dennis. Dennis has had his fingers burnt in court. It's very, mm. very, very expensive. Barry Hearn took West Ham on, didn't he? And lost yeah. a million pounds, didn't he? Right. He don't want to go near no high court again because he'll be thinking about his last appearance at high court, let me tell you. If you're thinking, oh, oh, I don't want to go to high court again. I got mm -hmm. royally rogered last time. Well, yeah. they won't want to do it again. And on this, his fighters failed a dope test, but they want to put the fight on. The authorities have said no, somebody could die, but they want to sue. They tried bully boy tactics. I mean, Mark, three different people have told they tried to bullet board, mate. How can you lack? How can you lack such moral fibre and integrity to actually still knowing your fighter has failed a drugs I test? I'm going to tell you, I know why. I know why. You know why? Accountants by name, accountants by nature. All boxing shows are covered, if you pay it, by Lloyds of London. Fact. I've seen the paperwork. They're all covered. All of them. Whether it's for 50 grand, or 50 million, they'll take your money. You can even insure your teeth, but Ryan, mate, if mm. you get your teeth knocked out, you get a new set. And if you're not a dentist, you'll make a few quid and get flights business class. Do you know what I mean? You've got to cover yeah. all bases. They're used to having all bases covered, Julian, but they aren't this time. Because he's failed the test. We're not going to get paid out. What can we do? A bit like when Golovkin and Eubank were going to fight and Eubank went... You need me, I want extra money. They went, oh, yeah, we're there to plan B. Yeah, putting a welterweight in with a massive, freakish punching, yeah. massive middleweight. Yeah, well, that's what they thought about Kel Brook, wasn't it? Smashed his eye sockets in. Smashed one eye socket in and half the other one. And left yeah, nearly, left ca nearly caved the guy's head in, basically. Nearly basically yeah. caved the kid's skull in and the kid had balls to get in there and look oh, how yeah. they treated him when they wanted him to book Sky for Crawford fight. They spat the dummy out because they were involved, didn't they? Men out like Kel Brook had gone round behind his back. Kel Brook spilt his guts for him and then went in with another massive puncher in the next fight after Golovkin and finished him off nearly. Hey? Kel Brook's in his right to go speak to him, like Dave Allen were in his right to go speak to uh, Bricktop and Andy Aylin and them. But where Dave Allen messed up, bit gullible, he wanted to report in and tell them what the offer were and let them talk him out of it. Showing his loyalty, he got pulled on, didn't he, from a high height? Do you know what I mean? Where were Dave? Dave Allen's had as much amateur fights as Conor Ben. Where were love for him when they were sticking him in with Otis when he were undefeated? Eh? There were no love for him there, were there? Where's Dave Allen blasting out uh, fighters in two rounds? Who yeah, had never been stopped? Yeah, because he's an honest pro, isn't he? He's not going to shove out in him, is he? He didn't even smoke weed. So, them, who are them? It, it kind of ends it. I've just been looking at someone here. Yeah, when I was fighting, bro, hold on, he's weed, I smoke fags. Bro, bro, that's the father. So, if his father's like that and knocking around with criminals, the son's going to pick up on it, isn't he? Looking for any edge you can get. Oh, we'll get this doctor and you might be able to master. Something's gone on where they've convinced that kid you can pull it off. And he's been gullible. And you know what? The only saving grace, Connor, the only saving grace that you've got is you're young and gullible 
and you can come out and you can say, you know what? I will badly advise them people are no longer around me. Because I don't think Eddie would have told him to take it. But Eddie's trying to get him out of it, isn't he? So with the other one we've talked, oh, he's trying to get him out of it. But I, I have a question for you. Yeah. And this is just a general question. So, let, let, all right, let's use the name now because you saw Liam Smith mention the doctor. He says the doctor's starting to get some of the blame for this. Yeah. Been a lot of people. I mean, about 14 fighters under his stable. We're not going to mention so you, we know they are, don't we? we? We know they are. And you you got there quite some time ago. I've, I I've got been there two months ago. I've been credited, by the way, because I said something. Nobody wanted to put it out, though, did they, when I mentioned it, did they? They all went. I'll never. I'll never take credit for anything, right? I, would have I found on this note I, a month ago. I found out about this from you. Yeah? yeah, I did. So I did some digging. Is this doctor the doctor who claims to be Conor Ben's yeah, doctor? Him, yeah, he's, he's now he's, a finster, isn't he? He's gone now. Yeah. So this uh, hormone replacement specialist and this obviously testosterone's a hormone, male hormone replacement specialist. This doctor is also licensed by the British Boxing Board of Control as a medic, right? He's a medic. Is this guy, yeah? Is he going to be licensed next week? No, is he? Like he's going to just he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Stay out of where you're gone, you. Somebody's going to be the patsy though, so it's going to be our spiked, or this kid is admitting to spiking me because it's the only way out now. I yeah. I, oh, I wish the problem is, the problem is, if you're dealing no, with, Ross. if you're dealing point. with characters of questionable, let's just say, questionable integrity, who are prepared to give you this stuff, and you wanna, and you wanna hang these out to dry, you wanna hang the blame on them. They're gonna sing as well. All of them are. So they will sing. So I think the best thing to do, Connor Ben, crush him. Is this? Yeah, I'm guilty. I'm 26 year old. I've, I've I've took gear in my system. But how long were he on it? How long has it been going on? Because I reckon it's been going on for five fights. Five. Other people are saying four. I think five. How long? We're not. They're not going to admit it because they got away with it. So it's going to be. It was that one time, and we didn't get to fight. I made a mistake. Blah de blah. That's what it's gonna be if he puts his hands up. Well, they said that many lies, they can't. No, they can't do it. Yes, right? you spun that many webs, you don't know where you are. Eddie Hearn must get up in the morning and think, Who am I going to be today? They don't know what they're gonna do next because they're out of touch with reality. They can do they, what they well, want. We we talked about Boris Johnson that hang on and hang on and hang on and hang on. They've no shame. All no that shame whatsoever these lads. I guess what? No shame. And they think you, they think like the government, they think go, they think voters are stupid. Eddie Hearn and Matchroom, and they think boxing fans are stupid. They think we're stupid. We should put billboards up in Essex saying what we really think. What do you reckon? You, there's certain things you could put. Long you know, way to drive, though, isn't it? Yeah, I bet you'd be... You know what? I, I don't want to. It leaves us. I mean, Nigel Ben, for example, I was a big Nigel Ben fan. I love Nigel Ben. You know that this must be. He must be going through a tough time, must Nigel? Well, he's, must be, he's come out now and he's saying, "I'm sure we're all stands." He's, he's going to say that, isn't he? Oh, gee, oh, no. What like you were? Then you come out and admit you won. Oh, I know what I'd be. Well, I, all that. I know what I'd be saying. If it was my lad. Um, but do you know what? You, listen, people must think we sound make out with a couple of philosophers. Did um, Nigel Ben not have a test, but Gerald McClellan fight? He didn't, did he? In that film, right, a documentary I've just watched, he collapsed yeah, in yeah. it, went back to the ring. He yeah. never got a chance to give a blood test, did he? We're not saying he took up with that fight. Well, there was allegations from the other camp, wasn't there? Insinuations. Well, he, drug test. Well, he just knocked somebody out, nearly killed them, and he wasn't drug tested. If I've got that wrong, put it to me. But the fight of their lives, it's called on YouTube. Have you seen it? Yeah. Where they have a charity evening. Kevin Lucian run, runs it, doesn't he? Ex manager, trainer, whatever fighter. And they raise money in that, which I thought were brilliant. They did a brilliant job. But let's have it right. Yeah. 
her, her family, Lisa McClellan, was screaming that he never got drug tested, weren't she? Okay, what, what are you doing? As a, as a coach and as a, as a boxing fan, as a coach, this is what I always look for. When you, when you start to get suspicious of certain things, and I'm not talking about the gentleman in question, I'm just talking about fighters in general. When you see fighters doing things that they've not previously done and they suddenly start, you know, blowing people away, but they weren't blowing people away in the early parts of the career, you have to ask questions, mate. You've got to ask those questions. I'm talking about seriously explosive power. Shots that, you know, savage combination punching, just combination punching like I've not seen for some time to the point that you barely recognise that, that fighter. Because we, we, we all see some of these fighters and you have to start questioning their performance. You have to start saying, how come that guy, let's just say Mr. Smith, with a very limited amateur career, wasn't knocking over journeymen and poor imports, and now he's smashing to pieces world-class opposition. Yeah, there's been a few people though in the last few years that have come on strong, and uh, these these people are the guys. A late bloomer. Yeah, he's having an Indian summer. Late bloomers. Are you? It's, they have they have Indian summers, don't they? Indian doing this summers and a purple patch and late bloomers. You know it's what? A bit like just, Adam Smith in it when he goes. Dave Allen is just coming out to the ring, very durable, capable, rough, tough, and rugged. That means this, it'll get knocked about, doesn't it? I'm not going to do a a dripping tap here, bless him. But hey, I, I'll, I'll right, it. Oh, it. The drip. Well, it looks right. like well. Let's put it this way. Legendary drip. If, right. if you try, if the fighter in question tried to sue the drip in tap, he won't get very far, would he? No, he won't, because all his money's buried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I'll give you an example. Tell him to F off, wouldn't he? I'm, Get probably gonna, I'm probably going to upset. I'm not going to mention definitely say anything. I might upset Manny Pacquiao fans now, of which I was one. Yeah. But when you get a guy like Manny Pacquiao, yeah, I remember Roberto Duran went through the through the, the weights. Duran at lightweight was a beast. He was knocking everybody out. Moved up to welterweight. He didn't quite carry that power. You know, he used more ring craft than guile. And then he moved up to light middleweight and middleweight and the knockout stopped. Manny Pacquiao moved through the weights and Manny Pacquiao was still up until a point. He blasted out. Well, he, he did a number on Delahoya. He smashed Ricky Hatton to bits. But for me, the one that really opened my eyes was the number he did on Miguel Cotto. So, I, I watched that and I just thought, wow. And at that time, then people started whispering about what was Manny Pacquiao doing? And all of a sudden, when a lot of heat came on Manny Pacquiao, the knockout stopped, didn't they? Yeah. He started going 12 rounds points. time after time. He just did he? He didn't have a knockout yeah. for a long time. He went on a real run of points, didn't he? And there's that photograph, that kind of infamous photograph of both um, Marquez and Pacquiao from the first fight when they were quite skinny and they were lighter weight and whatever they were, super featherweight or featherweight. And then to when the box at the higher weights and they got square jaws. Did he they, get busted, Marquez? I, I don't think he did. It, it, oh, but sure. All the names sound the same to me. I can't. You, you, just, you just look at the photographs and I've not made an accusation. I'm just saying you got to ask those questions, haven't you? You know, and this is, this is what we're doing. You know, we're, we're asking questions, but... Ultimately, we're not asking questions about Conor Ben because we've been provided with an answer, haven't we? Yeah, the, the, you know, boxing, right? It needs to save itself. But what were the other things we wanted to talk about? I, what the, well, the, one of the things what's happened, what I've been asked is, what has this done to the reputation of the fighters involved and the promoters involved? Well, this is how I look at it. Eddie Earn. He's probably just hung himself. Now, he could bail out the sport if Joshua gets beaten his next fight. He could be gone because he can't really look anybody in face now. But then again, the brass neck on these people, they have that many people that kiss them, kiss the rear ends. They'll, he, I won't put it past him, but how could anybody believe anything that he says now? That's why he's had to shut his pile. We've had, we haven't been able to shut him up for 12 years, right? You can't shut him up. No, no. Talks and talk. And he puts that much out that you believe it in, and 
so they'll be telling us that Joshua were robbed against Usyk in second fight. I guarantee you that'll be coming soon. History revisionist, mate. But it's done him terrible. And Kala, well, he's away with fairies at the moment. He's a basket case at the moment. I'm hearing all sorts. He's... Are you telling me Mick Hennessy, right? We're putting anything worse on than Callum on Channel 5 because I know we had two year fight a year candidates on Channel 5. One of them were that Eggington fight, one of that were a rate oh, fight, wasn't it? Unbelievable That's fight. That's yeah. right, good fights on there. And have you seen what he's serving up? Oh my god, and he's talking about YouTubers coming on. And what, what's all that about? He <sighs> he was dead against YouTubers. Do you remember that video he did on IFL yeah. where he was setting about it all, what it were, and all this? Now look. You get a few quid under the nose and sell the grandma down the street. And I think this is a boxing fan. It's a careful money. I, I think this is damaging. I think it's massively damaging to Ben, obviously, that he's young. Um, I think it's really damaging to Matchroom. I think the board of control have come out of this with some integrity. Yeah. Well, and do you know what? Time. Always asking for these guys showing leadership. Good for them. I think there are other people who have come out and said the fight should be off and really raised suspicion about the findings, not in a positive manner, no, no defence of Conor Ben. Lots of pundits and lots of ex-fighters have come out, and I think they need to be applauded, actually. People like Carl Frampton and, and guys like that. So they need to be applauded for Jamie standing Moore, playing something. Jamie Moore's come out and spoke out, hasn't he? I've not heard Jamie Moore, but I would expect him to. Genuine guy. Yeah, Jamie Moore. Uh, come out and he said, well, we said they're disappointed. I don't know what that means. It's their way of saying what they really think. Liam Smith, yeah. I said, I was like, go on, Liam Smith. Liam Smith, because you're a cheating bastard. Liam Smith doesn't say boo to anybody, does he, really? They're, they're nice kids, aren't they? And he just come out and they, they'll tell you straight because they've had run-ins with Canelo, haven't they? And did, uh, well, that Pradars are supposed to be a bit dodgy. You don't say anywhere, but the room, then he beat his younger brother, the small kid, didn't he? They absolutely, yeah, Stephen Smith. They, they absolutely fought his ass out that night. Let me tell you, they absolutely know that they've come up. They know they've come up against drug cheats, and they haven't lost because they're not good enough. They've lost because they're clean, and they know that. And that's why. For, Sorry, what? For Liam, yeah, for Liam Smith to come out and so strong and say that. That's that's. Hmm. Upsetting. That's upset people. Know, Liam Smith's going to say it though, only because he's been with Canelo, and he probably feels. Like Canelo, he probably thinks he's a strong, athletic, good boxer, Liam Smith, world champion. He's got in with Canelo and he's probably thought, well, how's he doing that? Or where's where's he getting that strength from all this and that? And he probably thinks that ain't right. So he probably, uh, because he's been busted, Canelo, Liam Smith could probably take that to heart, can't he? Yeah. He, losing against a drug cheat in front of millions of people. Yeah, he got paid on that, but it's not nice, is it? And well, he knows... He knows he was against a, a drug cheat, and we're allowed to say that about Canelo because he'd been well. Eddie Hearn said it about Canelo, didn't he? That's come yeah. back to haunt me as well. All this stuff you've said previously has come back to haunt you. So I'm surprised Eddie Hearn even promoted Canelo because going into Eddie Hearn, he should have got a much longer. That's, so that's, why, that, that's why we shouldn't really think Eddie's going to disappear because he's got such a brass neck on him, and that many people around him telling him he's great and this and that, and everybody has to laugh at his joke. Oh, listen. Anybody, anybody who knows Eddie Hearn, you don't have to laugh at his jokes when you're in his company, you kiss asses. Like Kel Brook's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing and rolling around on the floor. I said, I went at a show once. I went, I, I said to him, oh, funny. you hear that? He went, yeah, I didn't find that very funny. Kel Brook's old man or whatever, his stepdad or whatever. And well, howling. Like, I thought, get a grip of yourself. It wasn't even funny. You kiss ass. Man in the mirror moment, mate. Well, we need a few of them, don't we? You know, man, man in the mirror, man in the mirror moments. But I just feel that all this that's gone on, it's in bad taste, and they've shown the sense up. But he's he'll he'll come out and front it all out. He will. He'll be thinking he, he needs a bit of Dutch courage. But I think they'll look for somebody to say it's his fault. Somebody's going to come. Think, it. I think the doctor. Well, he's already done. Yeah, that's what people are saying to me. He's already gone on it. it was the doc badly the doctor's advised. been a copy. He's done a runner. He's ripped us off. He's billed us for all sorts. And we've been stitched up. And it, 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 it was a double agent working for Bricktop or something. They'll say, oh, look at that incident with me. Well, they were ringing me up. 
Oh, you've seen it, haven't you? Right. Yeah, what yeah. did it say on that phone? Where did that call come from? Brentwood Essex. Brent, Brentwood Essex. What were the number? Where did the number match to? Match room. Match room's office. Threatening phone calls. I couldn't believe it, mate. I couldn't you believe that. I used to get one on film. No, two on film, but I had three calls. You could see it on the phone anyway. What did he say in his emails? You've seen it all. Oh, Frank Warren. Be down to Warren. Not us. And I said, you know what? F this, F that. He's going to end up being a man mankies. Well, that's how he is, isn't it? Because that's how these people speak to you. They think, and everybody wants to go and watch that. Go on my channel from about four mm. years ago and have a look. It says Porky's Corner Matcham. Just put that in and you'll match your own phone call. Go watch part one and part two. I ain't bother about that. Come and knock on the door. Nobody's knocked on the door. Yeah, if they've got a problem with my videos, nobody's knocked on the door. Not one person. I had one person come to the factory and that's it. Nobody's knocked on my door because what they're going to do? Kill me for telling the truth. Telling the truth, yeah. yeah. They don't scare me. Well, they're scared of my mother. They not bother about anybody else. <laughs> you I'm should be, mate. We're all, we're all scared of our mother, mate. Scared of listen, my auntie and I've got a cousin who I'm scared of. That's it. it. It stinks, though, isn't it? I mean, another question we've been asked as well is, I got asked this. I get I get sent this stuff all the time. I thought I'll save these for when I come on come on on Porky's. People are asking about the British Boxing Board of Control. What what are they going to do with Ben? Are they going to suspend him? That okay. that's a question I've been asked so many times today. No, actually, no, no, they're, not, they're not. They're too weak. They'll say, "Hey, Pastor, you can." That's it. That's all they'll say. They'll move on. But who's going to want to fight him now? Is he going to fight anybody at welterweight now that he's bulked up? And this is where they've got no morality whatsoever. I'm not about the border control. I'm on about the promoters of this, this show. It's, they haven't said the fight's cancelled. They said it's postponed. So that, basically... They're still going to put it on? So it's postponed. Well, so what's that actually saying is... Credibility? Look, what credibility can this show possibly have now? The boat has sailed. It's gone. Surely they can't repackage him now unless he comes out and goes... I'm guilty, and he has two or three fights to build. You know, only way Conor Ben's going to win me up, but personally, me, right? Come out and say, I'm guilty, badly advised. Doctors had me off, he's done one. That's all they're going to be, because he's, he's, he's gone, hasn't he? Oh, badly advised, took bad advice, right? Yeah, but is anybody going to be anybody gonna ask him about the lies? He's going to say he didn't know they were out in him. It was something that's been put in to make this guy look good, this nutrition guy or whatever yep. guy, doctors, give him something and he didn't know what were in this drink and he was doing it to make me look good so he gets a bonus. All that, look, they'll palm it all off. Instead of just coming out going, look, I'm very limited. I've got no amateur ability. I was getting flogged and dropped a couple of times by p and who were a very, very, mm -hmm. very low-ranked journey man, wasn't he? Wasn't even a puncher. I was getting flogged by him. So I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to be fish food here, so I need to do something. And I took bad advice, made mistakes. But like I said earlier, I'm going to say, ah, all right then, Connor. Well, I'm with you on it. <coughs> Gad ain't going to ask that. People are picking Gad up and all them talk sport lot. They're not going to ask what I'm asking. None of them kicked off at that presser, did they? No. They just walk up. Oh, well, that, my mate was there. He said, Put the their heads down and walked off, didn't they? They were under the breaths, weren't they? They shuffled away. Nobody did anything. Nobody said, here, you know what? I'm not being funny, but you know what? This ain't right. So and how do we get... Dean White. How do we out. get... Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Dean no, White, no. You're, a, you're a weasel. You're a weasel. Why are you coming out saying the fight should have gone ahead? Crawl out Eddie's rear, you weasel. You weasel. He'd have put it on, wouldn't he? Dean White, Shuck Knight, whatever you are. Wesley Snipe, <laughs> Brock Lesnar, whatever. I don't know how many names is. Lamar Scott, whatever you are, mate. Nobody's heard of you. Have you ever done any porridge? Sorry about that. I just get revved up about that. <laughs> and, and that's no. Sam Jones it, coming out. And he, oh, Connor Ben. And then an hour later, he, he, he's trying to rectify what he said. Just be yourselves. Crawl out of everybody's rear. Well, you, we're all entitled to our opinion. Like I said, we're very careful how we word things. In my opinion, you're a proven drugs cheat. That's my opinion. A proven drugs cheat. He failed it, hasn't he? And it's not like it's uh, some other counter pre-workout job. It was a full Monty, wasn't it? 
Yeah. Testosterone and all that. Big wheelbarrow so, to carry your nuts around in. Right. So what we now need to know is, was it intentionally was cheating? It was it intentionally cheating or have you inadvertently taken something? I think he's cheated me, but we don't know. Do we? They're not going to admit it with this. Listen, if you lined them all up, Earn, Ben, Daddy Ben. So you've got Earn, Daddy Earn, Baby Earn, Daddy Ben, Baby Ben. You've got <coughs> all of them. Even Eubanks. I mean, that took out Adley Burke. Line all that lot up. That Eubanks say we all his, his uh, antics leading up to it. Line them all up. Who would you believe? None. You, you know what? I, do you know what I want to hear from? Any of them. What? I want to hear from, uh, I have been a bonnet about this because the way I used to have my camps, camps, whatever you want to call them. I want to hear from the doctor, the performance director, the strength conditioner coach and the nutritionist. Because if they don't know what's going on, are we going to, are we going to is, the, is only the boxer aware of this? Do you think that Connor Ben will be so clued up on what to take and what not to take. Maybe he's accidentally, he's inadvertently done this stuff, but I think it's more likely he's been ill-advised. I think he's been ill-advised, but I think he's gone along with it because they were getting away with it. And I think it meant that much to him to get Yule back back for his dad. Because let's have it right, his dad were robbed in the second one, wasn't he? Royally shafted, wasn't he? He even took a point oh, off him for note, didn't they? At yeah, end yeah, his dad would royally shafted, wasn't he? Maybe they were trying to push for a third fight. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know, but his dad were well, royally shafted. Maybe they were, but he, so it will. His dad went north and one and one with you, with you back then. Anyway, really, it were one each. A bit like with Leonard and Hearns, wasn't it? The Leonard yeah, the rematch was a bad decision. Yeah. But I think it's in his system, so he's got to be respond. You take responsibility. Kind of Ben's interviews. He's going on about people take responsibility for what's in your system. How's it getting there? Well, come on to roost, isn't it? This is the most logical thing, though, because Nigel said this. They've all said, we've got to find out what's happened, right? So you start at the genesis of this. You question the test. Yeah. You question the validity of the test. And by doing that, what you have to then do is you have to trigger the action on the V sample. It goes right back to what we've been talking about. So you question the validity of the test or what do you do? You say, we've clearly taken something we didn't know we were supposed to take. Yeah. How has that got in my system? There's no, there's no third option, is there? That's right, mate. No. It's either the test is a lot of rubbish or, wow, I've taken something. I have no idea. I need to go back and try and fathom what I've been taking. I need to look at my protein shakes. I need to look at my food. I need, need to look at my multivitamins. I need to look at all these things I've been taking to figure out how I've taken a fertility drug for female females. Yeah, well, it's took some, has it? But uh, like I said, you don't get to, we don't get to the bottom on it with these people. They're not just going to come out, are they? But what's amazed me is the silence. I mean, even Dave Cowell came out and I was like, and Johnny Nelson, I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like, I'm having to agree with people like that, so there's something wrong, isn't there? <laughs> Listen, John, I, I heard Johnny Nelson. Johnny Nelson times. spoke really good. I can't understand why he doesn't speak like that all the time on every issue. I always say this about Johnny Nelson. I've said this to you. He's like, he knows his boxing. He, he knows his boxing. He, he massively knows his boxing. He, he knows all this he stuff. But he's like, every other day of his life. It doesn't just know boxing. When you listen to him, actually, he's a smart guy. You know, he, he tries to be jokey and, and show deference and things. And Johnny Nelson's a smart guy, but he's he's been he's been refreshing actually to listen to him this week. But would he be saying this if there was match room was still with Sky? Would he be That's saying this if Conor Ben were at Sky? Because don't forget, Johnny Nelson went missing of at Dylan White B sample, didn't he? Let's have it right. They all went missing, didn't they? Dug their heads in a big up, big, in a big, uh, big square meter of sand, didn't they? Uh, head straight yeah. in sand, wasn't it? I don't even want to comment on it and all that. People were going out to bat for Dylan White, like Malcolm X, old big Malk. He came out and said, "Well, I've heard that Oscar Rivers failed the dog test. Well, that cost you your job at Sky, big Malk." Yeah, because that didn't happen, did it? Hey, 
It didn't happen, did it? But this is what we're saying. It's small. Screen, big Malk it? invented it and then said some big big geezer at the oh a sports lawyer told him who's very well connected and a member at board. What sports lawyer and what member at board, Big Mal? You went into bat for your mate, the can't man. Anybody wants it, can't get it. That's what happened. And, and I'm surprised he hasn't even come out and said his bit on this, Big Mal. I don't even know what Big Mal's even saying these days <laughs> anyway, with Trevor McDonald glasses on. Sorry about that. Big Malk in it, he loves me. He couldn't cope with aren't me. <laughs> Malky baby. <laughs> so I don't know, mate. It's fried our heads, hasn't it? It's something to fried my pal Richard's head. Listen, it's yeah, like I say. Faith, Richard. Let's hope you'll be all right in a few weeks, mate. We're doing a late one tonight. We're, we're showing the same dedication tonight, working these hours, that your troll show to you. That, you know what I mean? We're showing that kind of dedication, aren't we? Yeah, it's like Dennis a couple of weeks ago when I went up and seen Dennis to uh, have a chat. Uh, and he, he was coming out with, oh, you won't believe what I've got. Like, I said, Dennis, don't even start me with your big signings that you're going to sign that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, save it for another day. Yeah. And, say, and, and, and so he'll laugh and I'll say, I'll tell you something though. I bet, I bet, I'm a veteran I bet, though now, aren't I, Julia? I'm a veteran now, aren't I, around it? I bet, I bet Dennis, I bet. Dennis would have done a much better job dealing with this situation than these guys have. I'll put it, I'll say that anyway. Sure. Well, I mean, only incident I can recall with Dennis with this was the Liam Cameron incident with cocaine and he washed his hands of him straight away. Straight away. Man, like I said, that was very, very harsh what we did to Liam Cameron, but Dennis is a man of integrity, don't he? I mean, he you know, he told me about the Dave Allen thing, you know, he's like, your job's to train, you're not getting fit. Yeah, it would rock his heart, that. Yeah, it, would, it, it would break his heart, but he's a man who is no-nonsense, isn't he? But he's, he's he, honest, he had decent. a fortune invested in Dave Allen. Um, he was getting a wage and money to fight. Because he was wasn't he? And you know what? He was tough as old boots. And he turned bad. up. When he first started there, he was ripping into training sessions. And I don't know what happens, but somewhere down the line, Fighters when they get to like what is six and oh in a draw with Dennis. Well, we yeah. were six and oh and he had a fight and it would it would a draw and they never worked after that. Because Dennis would have said on the Monday, right, you're drawing against him, what's been going on, and had done his checks and realized not training. Not doing the work. Yeah. Like, he said he's a very honest kid. He said he won't do oh, I bet he would. I bet he'd just come out and say that. Ability I, I, were there, I, ability were there, but I trained the kid. Good, good kid. Brilliant. Oh, and a, a kid called um, Tyro McInerney. It was just oh, brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was just so worn down by it and everything. He won the nationals and all that kind of stuff. And is it? He was getting you know fights at last minute and short notice, and he got sickened by it. And he just turned around to me and he goes, "Still talk to him all the time. He's a lovely kid." And I says, "He said, Jules, he goes, I, you know, I hated training, don't you?" And I went, "You don't say, mate." But what happens is when you're treated as sometimes like he was, you're treated as the B side, and you just you get you get disillusioned with the sport. And yeah, I look at I know it's a different subject, but I know we've got two minutes. But I look at a kid like Tyro McInerney. He was probably the best kid I ever trained. You know, seriously, he was absolutely brilliant. But you got to tick all those boxes. But you've got to be thick-skinned, and you've got to be selfish, and you've got to be you know. Just... You no, know you just said this. Bang on. Hang on, I I I I once said something to Carl Crops and he goes, I am I have been selfish since I'm massively with my family and my friends and all that. You know, when you've got to go to bed early and all that, and you can't do this and can't do that. He stuck to it. But not everybody it's, rot it's rotten for girlfriends and families, and it's rotten for them, mate. Disaster, isn't it? It's a disaster. Woman's having to tread on eggshells, isn't she? Yeah. Maybe she had to, you know, even in camp and all that. And Fight, fighters making way, he's moody as hell. Oh, um, not and good. you go to bed. You go to bed early, and there's no fun in the when the curtains are drawn, is there? You know what I mean? It's a tough life, mate. So, will this rematch? We'll wrap it up. Will this rematch happen? Yes or no? Right. I said the fight wouldn't happen when they first disclosed the drugs um, thing. Absolutely, this fight won't happen. Well, so it might happen in five. Will it, will it happen at first? I mean, will it, it might happen, happen in five years. It won't happen in the next two, three years. No chance. It's too raw in it, and there's too much legal implications and. They've got to do an old PR job on him now from the beginning, haven't they? And that yeah. means, in my opinion, 
come out and go, guilty. I'm a young lad. I made mistakes. And I'm mistakes. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You get another yeah. chance. Well, they can't, you see, because it's sponsors and they shot them out so often. That ain't their style. So they're going to, because they got away with it that long, they just keep lying. And that's what Ernst do. The liars. His dad admits it. It was a liar. I used to lie. Now I tell the truth. He says, No, you don't, Bazza. Once a liar, 